Hello and welcome back. So as week 15 is currently underway thanks to some afternoon games on Martin Luther King Day, we're going to take a look back at the top performers from week 14 that you can actually own. So as usual, in order to qualify for this, the players must be under 50% owned and we'll go through three forwards, two defensemen, one goalie, and a couple of honorable mentions as well. But before we do that, uh, I just updated the Data Draft Player Hub with an additional uh, requirement or additional uh, tool that you can use. Uh, this was a request from a viewer, Brandon Clark. Uh, I'd been thinking about this for a while, but I just got around to doing it with his uh, motivation. Uh, and I wanted to show you how to use it because it does directly apply to this video as well. So this is the Data Draft Player Hub you see here. This looks pretty familiar. I've been using these cards, uh, these hubs for a while in some of the videos. On this side, you see the player ranking. So this is just every player in the league. Uh, all the filters are turned off. And now what you can see here is the change. The change from the last time I updated the hub, which is weekly. So with last week to this week, how much did a player change? So here you can see, obviously, a guy like Nick Ehlers. He went up 14.2 points in the rating system, mainly because he didn't play a lot. He had two games under his belt, went out with injury, and he just came back, and within the last week, uh, he's gone off and he's done what he's normally done, um, but that takes into account the fact that he was injured for a while. But the way that you can use this to help you make uh, some decisions on guys that are hot or not, you can go right up to, to the change section here, if you can filter it this way, and you just hit this down button to sort by the players that have changed the most over the last week. So here you can see uh, Lucas Reichel, he had that incredible game, the hat trick game, that bumped him up considerably. He was way lower uh, on the rating scale because he's not particularly great in fantasy, uh, but that definitely bumped him up. Max Pacioretty was hurt, so he got bumped up a lot. So you'll see a lot of this. But the way you want to read this is, uh, typically the guys who are going to be the most fantasy relevant are going to be in the low 60s to you know high 80s. Uh, in that range is what you're going to try to look for. Obviously, if you're looking for a specific component, a hits or a blocks guy, uh, or a guy who's only good for one thing, then you can dip below. I wouldn't go anything below 40s. Um, 40 is pretty much the cutoff for anything that would be relevant to fantasy. Uh, anything below that, like, you know, Brett Sini's not really an NHL player right now, so some of these guys are a little too low to be considered uh, for your fantasy team. But what you can do, look at Thomas Tatar. He's a mid-60s player. That's basically a waiver type of player. And he just went up 8.74 points in the last week alone. So he had a good week. Uh, so this is how you can kind of spot some trends with certain guys that are playing in the league. Mackenzie Weger bumping up. That's a nice sign for some of you guys who have Weger. Uh, Joel Farabee having a really nice uh, breakout week last week. And that's heading into this five-game week for Farabee and the Flyers this week. So... Uh, this is just one other little wrinkle to this tool that you can use to help you find some better value. Now, you can also use it the opposite direction uh, and look at the bottom. Now, we're not going to get all the way down to it because uh, some of these guys are, you know, just they haven't played or they were taken out of the lineup. Uh, a guy like Bertuzzi has been hurt. Some of these guys, it's not as much of a, a tool to use for the guys that are on the downtrend, but you can start to see some uh, of the top players. Guys like Perron has gone down three points in the last week. Sorelli's gone down a little bit. It just shows that they're a little bit colder. Uh, so this is how you can use this tool to help you find some trends uh, from week to week. Obviously, some guys are going to be more valuable than others, but this is just one little thing that you can use to help you make some better decisions with your waiver ads. But with that said, let's get back into the video. Now, I did want to mention you can access the Player Hub in the Patreon link in the description below and get complete access to uh, both the Player Hub and the Goalie Hub. The Goalie Hub does not have that feature yet. Uh, I'll be working on that in the coming week. Uh, but for now, you do have that access on the Player Hub. But our first forward this week is Lucas Raymond. Now, he had an incredible week. You can see it here. Three games, seven points, three goals, four assists, two power play points. Uh, now, he didn't do a lot in terms of peripherals, only five shots one hit, and four blocks. But he is playing top line with Robbie Fabry and Dylan Larkin right now. Uh, and you'll notice on that tool that we just looked at, Fabry increased 14.86 to a score of 64. Uh, and that's basically him coming off of injury and starting to perform really well. But nonetheless, you can see his player log down here, a goal every single game, a couple of two assist games. Uh, so Lucas Raymond, he has that potential to break out uh, and become an elite offensive player at any time. And maybe now he's starting to put it together and find that rhythm. Uh, 
If you look at his player hub, uh, mainly good for power play points, 93rd percentile in power play points. He's going to get you goal production, 87th percentile there, 0.32 goals per game. Uh, you like to see that. You would like to see his shot totals a little bit higher, um, but they're not quite there yet. Um, this is sort of a thing that younger players have to learn. You score more when you shoot, so you might as well take a bunch of shots, uh, and he's not doing that right now. But this week, uh, he didn't need a lot of shots. He scored three goals uh, on only five shots, so pretty good shooting percentage this week. Doesn't get a lot of hits or blocks, so not very complete in hits and blocks leagues, which is why his rating is lower. And again, if you want the player hub without hits and blocks, these ratings are all completely different. Uh, if you only want these categories right here, if you don't want the hits and blocks, and again, you can find that in the Patreon link in the description below. But Raymond, 49% owned, single position right winger. Uh, if you're in the market for one of those, he had an incredible week and you could ride that hot streak into this week. Our second player, Kirby Doc. Uh, pretty good week for him, all things considered. Uh, Montreal, not the best place to mine fantasy value right now, but 17% owned two percentage things up here because of a typo, but he's dual position eligible, which does help you out, uh, to try to get him into your lineup more frequently, four games, two goals, one assist, two power play points, but the peripherals are pretty good as well with 11 shots, six hits, six blocks on the year, 27 points in 44 games is not bad at all. Uh, 12 of those points are on the power play and two game winning goals. Uh, so he's when he's been uh, you know on that top power play unit when he's been performing well he's been basically a point per game player but when he's not there he's been struggling a little bit so right now uh, he's currently power play one and he's second line center so he is getting that time with the top offensive guys uh, on Montreal guys like Cole Caulfield Nick Suzuki Caulfield had a an incredible game last night uh, against the Rangers so did Kirby Doc. Uh, even the Rangers announcers were talking about how per, how well he was playing. So this could be one of those situations where he's a young player, inconsistency comes into play, uh, and when he's hot, you're going to want to ride those hot streaks, but then you're going to want to know when he starts to cool off because then he will cool off for a pretty uh, considerable margin. Now, he did increase 2.64 on the Data Draft Player Hub. Uh, he's now a 65 overall. You do get a little bit of hits and blocks coverage, not a lot, but every now and then he'll throw a hit or you know block a shot. His power play production, pretty good. 86th percentile, uh, 0.25 power play points per game. The goal production, not great. It's there, you know, 65th percentile, 0.16 goals per game. You're not owning him for that, though. You're getting power play production and assist totals out of Kirby Doc. So again, 17% owned. He'll probably be there for you in most league formats. Uh, and they do have a pretty uh, decent schedule this week. Um, so definitely a time to, t to take a look at Kirby Doc uh, if you're in need for a center right wing dual eligible player. Now, Ellie Tolvanen, I mentioned yesterday in the weekly schedule video. Uh, I told you that he would be featured in this video for sure. Uh, four games this week, four points, three goals, 10 shots, and 13 hits. Um, so his season performance, very small sample size thus far, seven points in eight games with Seattle. Um, but because of that, he did increase 3.87%, uh, not percent, 3.87 points on the data draft player hub and is now the third highest ranking Kraken player. Now, the reason for that is because he is very complete. The assist totals aren't there. Uh, I would imagine those will start to come as he continues to get power play time and as his, you know, he's a shooter. He's a guy who likes to score goals. His goal per, uh, production is almost elite level, 88th percentile. So that's what you're hoping for. But goal scorers, they can pick up assists when the puck bounces off the goalie's chest and somebody else bangs it in. They'll pick them up uh, like that off of their shots. They don't necessarily have to pass the puck all the time. So I would expect this to rise. But the reason he's so high, a 71 rating, is because of the hits and blocks coverage, which I mentioned yesterday I did not see coming. 1.95 hits per game, 1.19 blocks per game. So right now, what you're getting from him is a goal scoring hitter and blocker, which is also a pretty rare combination when you're looking for hits and blocks coverage in bangers leagues to find a guy that also scores goals on top of that is pretty rare. Um, guys like Zucker hit, but they also score goals, but they don't get blocks. So Tolvanen getting all three makes him a little bit more valuable, which is why he's the third rated player on the Seattle Kraken and the Kraken right now have the number one offense in the league at 108 goals for. So this is exposure that you're going to want. Um, right now, Tolvanen is a dual eligible uh, left wing, right wing 
Uh, he's playing third line with Yanni Gord and Oliver Bjorkstrand. So that's, uh, you know, Yanni Gord's a pretty productive center. Bjorkstrand is a shooter as well. So there's two uh, trigger men on that line as well. So maybe you want to access Yanni Gord uh, if you're, you know, in a deeper league and you can't get Tolvin in. But he is also playing second power play unit. And I don't think the second designation matters because the second unit is McCann, Bjorkstrand, Donato, and Dunn. And if we've been paying attention, Vince Dunn has been on fire the last couple of weeks. So they're just rolling out whatever line is productive. So he is getting power play time. Uh, he doesn't have any power play points in the last week, but I would expect those to start coming as he starts to score and get more opportunities in the lineup. But nonetheless, an excellent week for Eli Tolvanen uh, with a four-point uh, effort in four games. Now, as we turn to the defenseman, uh, I mentioned this player in yesterday's video as well. Ryan Graves, only 15% owned. Uh, this week, three games, four points. You're probably not going to see that again all year. He's not a guy who's known for his offense. If you look at his season performance, 15 points in 40 games, not bad at all. But uh, he's not necessarily a guy who's going to be relied upon for offensive production. But what he does do really well is block shots. 94th percentile in blocks. Uh, 1.3 hits per game is okay. You'd like to see a little bit higher if you were targeting him for hits and blocks uh, or blocks and something else. So right now he's only getting it done in terms of blocks, but last week the offense was there. A goal, three assists, four points, uh, and he had a four-game point streak with five points in his last four games. So this continued for one more game where he, ha he picked up another assist. So he's hot right now. He's getting the offense right now. Uh, if you wanted a blocks guy specifically with a little bit of offensive production, uh, you could potentially con continue to ride this Ryan Graves streak because he's averaging over 20 minutes per game. He's on the second pairing, but he doesn't get any power play time, which is what you see here. Uh, zero power play points per game. So the reason he's getting all that time, guys like John Marino are out of the lineup and he's been bumped up in the lineup uh, now playing the second pairing, and he increased 5.66 on the Data Draft Player Hub because of this production that he found in the last week. So he's trending upwards, he's making the most of this opportunity, and if you want to ride this hot streak, you should pick him up now before he starts to get a little bit more owned up. Uh, but I wouldn't expect this offensive production to continue for an extended period of time. Nonetheless, great week for Ryan Graves. Now our last defenseman is Brett Pesci. Uh, 14 percent owned two goal two goals two assists four points in four games 11 shots uh, and he's another one that's not necessarily known for his offensive production four goals 14 assists pretty much the same as uh, Ryan Graves but the plus 14 if you're in a plus minus league that helps a little bit four power play points so he is getting a little bit of power play time on the second unit uh, he's currently second pairing and second power play unit um, but yeah, also the two game-winning goals, if you're in a points league that weights those a little bit heavier, uh, I don't know how much you can rely on those, but the fact that uh, Carolina is a very good team, and he's the second-pairing defenseman on that team, uh, and he's going to get some opportunities to be out there late in games to pick up game winners, that could potentially factor into your decision. And he has 10 points in his last 11 games, so the offensive production has been coming for a little while now, uh, two goals and eight assists over that span. As we look at his player hub, he's mainly good for blocks, but he does cover a little bit of other categories a little bit better than guys like Ryan Graves. So the assists are a little bit higher, the shots are a little bit higher, and there is some semblance of a power play uh, production in his file. Um, 0 0.09 is not great, but at least it's something compared to Ryan Graves. So a little bit more complete than Graves, uh, and he had an excellent week himself with the four points in four games. Now, as we turn to the goaltending, uh, Sam Montembeau is our goalie this week, 10% owned. Uh, typically with this, there are guys who are higher ranked in terms of Yahoo category leagues because they only played one game. I tried to find players or goaltenders that played a couple of games at least. And Sam Montembeau has taken the crease in Montreal because of an injury to Jake Allen. So he did play four games. He got two wins, which is pretty good considering how porous Montreal is defensively. Uh, 2.28 goals against and a 9.43 save percentage uh, on the season. Not bad for a really struggling team. 8-7-2 uh, is his record in 17 starts. 3.17 goals against and a 9.10 save percentage. The interesting part of his file is his goals saved above expected. And him and Jake Allen are both well above expected. 
Uh, and I've been saying this for a while. Both of those goalies are good. They're skilled goaltenders that can make a lot of saves. But the reason you don't want to own them is this team exposure, six percentile in terms of team expected goals against per game. So they are giving up a ton of chances, a ton of high quality chances. They were leading the league by a wide margin in defensive zone turnovers. Uh, and you can see that anytime you watch them play, they turn the puck over in their own end. They get hemmed in in their own end. Uh, now, it is interesting to note that this hub was updated uh, I believe Friday night or Saturday morning. So this was before the Rangers game where he added another win uh, and then you know bumped up his numbers a little bit. But he's probably low 40s right now. He's not any higher than that because of this team exposure. So this is a great file. 925, 929, 947, 974 in the save percentages. But look at the shot totals. So if you're in a points league where you get points for total save volume, this is a potential option for you, uh, especially this week with Jake Allen out because he's getting shelled on a nightly basis. 37 shots, 39, 36, 38. Uh, but if you're in a categories league, you're probably not going to want this team exposure because all it takes is one game where he slips up and gets pulled after, you know, uh, five goals on six shots or something like that where they're, they're just coughing the puck up in their own end and whatnot. And that could destroy your goalie categories for the entire week. So just something to keep in mind. He's not for everybody, but if you're in a points league that has total saves uh, or if you're looking for uh, a starter in the meantime right now, uh, he is the starter for Montreal. He's going to get the bulk of the, the starts for uh, the foreseeable future until Jake Allen comes back. Uh, and an excellent week nonetheless for Sam Montembeau. Now, honorable mention, there's two guys with very similar files, uh, but because it's uh, not every league is a hits and blocks league, that's why these guys are honorable mentions. They were ranked higher in the uh, category rankings uh, for hits and blocks leagues. For Joel Edmondson, four games, one assist, so nothing offensively, but 10 shots, eight hits, and 15 blocks, which is 3.75 blocks per game. Uh, and you remember back, if you watched a video, I did a trends video on some of the best hits and blocks guys. Edmondson was way above everybody else uh, in terms of his blocks coverage. And David Savard, his teammate, was also close to him. Those two were very high in that ranking uh, in the upper left quadrant of that graph because of how well they block shots and they get some hits as well. And you can see that in his season performance, 60 hits, 100 blocks only six points and that minus 18. So if you have plus minus, you're going to want to stay away from Edmondson. Uh, but if not, he's definitely uh, a guy that you can turn to for blocks. He is 100th percentile in blocks, 2.91 per game. Uh, he's third in the entire league behind Alec Martinez and his teammate, David Savard. Martinez with 3.53, Savard with three. Uh, so he, it's just a matter of time. Uh, before one of those two, you know, has uh, a breakout game and, you know, overtakes the lead. But nonetheless, this is elite level blocks coverage. You're getting some hits as well, 1.79, not much of anything else. And there's not a lot going on in terms of Montreal and offensive production. However, on the Data Draft Instagram account the other day, I mentioned that there was a trade rumor involving Joel Edmondson potentially uh, being traded to Vancouver. Now, I've heard a lot of other things about Vancouver, potential Rick Tockett coaching uh, Vancouver, but uh, Joel Edmondson, if he's going to get moved at the deadline, that could be an interesting move for you to pick him up because you're going to get the blocks no matter what. You're going to get the hits coverage. And if he goes to a team with a better offensive uh, ceiling, you're maybe going to get a couple of extra goals and assists thrown in there as well. So something to keep an eye on as we move forward. But nonetheless, a pretty good week peripheral wise for Joel Edmondson. And then that brings us to our last honorable mention, and that is Jeremy Lazan. Uh, similar file in terms of his hits and blocks coverage. Four games, two goals, seven shots, 20 hits and five blocks on the season. Again, not much offensive production, but 120 hits. That's what you're, you know, owning him for. You see this nine hit game he had here against Buffalo, five against Toronto, five against Ottawa. He's 98th percentile in hits, 3.43 hits per game. That's what you like to see if you're in a bangers league. You would like to see a little bit more of other stuff going on, but 
Obviously, you're not going to get that. And the reason you're not going to get that is because he's playing third pair and not getting any power play time. So that does factor into it. Uh, but nonetheless, he is one of the elite hitters in the game. So if you're in a, a situation where you just need to fill that category, you just need hits, or if hits are weighted in your point league, uh, this is a guy that can get you a nice point floor on a regular basis. But that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank you all for watching till the end. Remember, you can get any of the player hubs in the Patreon link in the description below. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers before the All-Star Game, and all of your help uh, will definitely help me get there. Uh, and I want to thank you again for the loyal people who are watching these every week. Um, with the holidays and everything, a lot of the, uh, the stats have been down on the channel. People just, you know, spending time with their family. I completely understand that. Uh, but if you're here, you're watching weekly, I appreciate you very much. And I just wanted to let you know that uh, right at the end of the video. But thank you again. I will see you in the next one.